Consequently, in my dreams, I eat, swim in oceans and rivers. I find myself in the midst of fishes and snakes, and I sleep with different women. I was told by a prophet that these are symptoms of water spirits. I have done everything he told me, but I am yet to find any solution. Another prophet told me appeasing and serving them is the only way out. I want to know why water spirits are so powerful and difficult to overcome. Water spirits are very powerful because they have enormous control over the emotional body of man. We are very emotional and water spirits reside on the emotional or astral plane. That's why it is very easy for them to subjugate the astral bodies of any human being they are interested in. Also, water spirits are present in anything that contains water. The human body contains 60% water. In summation, water spirits can attack human beings through the astral body and water. That's why they are very powerful and irrepressible. Are we created to worship water spirits? Is serving them the only way we can free ourselves from their torments? We are created to serve the living God and not water spirits. We are created in God's image. A human being is the embodiment of the four elements of nature. In contrast, water spirits are the embodiment of only the element of water and nothing else. Therefore, human beings are superior to water spirits. But merely saying we are superior to water spirits does not mean we can easily compel them to obey us. During a storm at sea, the Master Jesus rebuked the sea and the winds. Let me put it in another way. The Master Jesus rebuked water spirits and the spirits of the air. They obeyed him without hesitation because the Master Jesus possessed divine powers. Water spirits will not obey you if you don't possess high degree of spiritual powers and purity of heart. Most people binding and casting water spirits don't possess any iota of spiritual power. Therefore, you don't expect water spirits to obey their commands. If you don't live in harmony with natural laws and lack the spiritual powers to command water spirits, negotiating with them through the intervention of a voodoo priest is the only option left for you. Quite a number of pastors preaching to us have negotiated with the water spirits tormenting them. But if you see such pastors conducting deliverance services, you will think they possess true spiritual powers. Water spirit problems are commonplace in society because in the past our ancestors had dealings with them and they want the relationship to continue with the children they left behind on planet Earth. What can one see in the marine kingdom? What should one do to see water spirits? Do they succumb to death? You will see extraordinary beauty in the marine kingdom. Mermaids are prominently beautiful and seductive. You will see them moving about as human beings move about on planet Earth. You will see kings and queens and their coral residents. You will see intelligent and less intelligent water spirits. You will see some of them dancing and others indulging in certain amount of work, etc. One must attain a high degree of spiritual development and maturity so that he can use his imagination to change himself into a mermaid and mentally project himself into the ocean and submit himself to the bottom of the ocean where he will find himself in the marine kingdom full of glamour and beauty. I want to make clearer, water spirits succumb to death and when they die they cease to exist. In contrast, a human being is an immortal being. When a human being dies, the soul continues to exist. In the spirit world, water spirits envy us a lot because of this. They know that the souls of human beings continue to exist after physical death. If a spirit enters the home of a person, what does it see? A spirit does not see the physical walls, doors, furniture, etc. of a house. If a spirit enters the home of a human being, 
The spirit only sees the astral aspects of the walls, doors, and furniture. A spirit cannot see physical objects because they are invisible to him. The astral plane is invisible to human beings and the physical plane is invisible to spirits. My father is a good man who gave birth to a very bad son. His second son is a thief, courtist and rapist. He has brought shame and disgrace to our family. May I know why God often permits good parents to give birth to children of perverse and evil nature? I thought that the good qualities of parents might attract good children to them. The Almighty God works in a mysterious way. There must be a deep-seated reason why a bad child is placed in the hands of good parents. God often places imperfect souls in the hands of good parents in the hope that their advice, scolding and guidance will help the plaguesome child to amend his ways. Bad children will benefit from the affection and care offered by virtuous parents. Many so-called good parents have not attained all round perfection to enable them to become one with the Almighty God after physical death. That's why they are still here on planet Earth. Troublesome children are often sent as a trial for the improvement and development of certain qualities in parents. Parents will attain certain spiritual benefits if they do their best to improve the life of the bad child God sent to them. Is God punishing us for our sins through the great law of karma? Wrong assumption. We are the ones inflicting punishment upon ourselves because we fail to live in harmony with cosmic laws. We have been told we shall reap what we sow. The life of a human being is all about sow now and reap later. We sow through our thoughts, words and deeds and much later everything we did must come back to us. Through the law of karma, God wants us to have personal experience of the good and bad things we have done so that we can make amends. Why are some children born with little or no natural abilities? Why some have extraordinary natural abilities well above the average for their age? In the areas such as emotional maturity, intellectual ability, music, sports, acts, and so on. There is nothing like partiality in the nature of God. There are two major occurrences in the family that confirms that the soul does not change. One, display of extraordinary talent, natural abilities, well above the average, and the irrepressible desire of many children to follow their chosen career rather than the one imposed on them by their parents. The physical body changes, but the soul does not. All the children exhibiting extraordinary talents, stunning intellectual abilities are actually exhibiting the results of progress previously acquired by them in their past life or lives. Most children insist on following their chosen career. They want to cling to the progress they have accomplished in a previous life. The career they are insisting on is actually the outcome of a vague remembrance of their past life and they want to cling to the career they adored in a previous life. May I know why God permits evil spirits to incite us to do bad things? Whenever you observe vultures hovering around a particular place, a dead animal must be in that vicinity. The vultures will depart if you remove the dead animal. If you bring the dead animal back again, the vultures will cluster again. It is wrong to assume Evil spirits are authorized by God to incite us to do bad things. The truth is our evil desires, schemings, deceitful and revengeful thoughts, etc. attracts and retain evil spirits around us. Also, I want people to bear in mind, evil spirits are instruments often used by God to try our faith and persistency in doing what is right. Why, you might ask. A human being is an imperfect spirit, 
clothed in human flesh. Being an imperfect spirit, we need to be prodded. We need to be pushed a bit so that we can advance more quickly. Call for counseling. Port Harcourt, 0803-301-9216. Lagos, 0810-004-5571. Abuja, 0705-347-7206. Yenagua, 0806-357-1205. Follow us on social media on Twitter at Guru Desaye. On Instagram at Guru Desaye. On Facebook at Guru Desaye. On YouTube. Desires Pathfinder TV.